Sam and his triplet brothers are checking out what life is like in the New Zealand Defence Forces. And today, Sam is at Burnham Army Camp. How's it going? I'm Sam. Yeah, morning Sam. I'm Lance Corporal Andy Leslie. I understand you want to find out what it's like to be an electronics technician in the Army. That's correct, yeah. First up, we're going to start with some physical training. All Just right. chuck this on and we'll go. Cheers. Good. Eight, two, double, march. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the aim, guys, is to slap your partner in the face. They're also aiming to slap you. You're aiming to not get slapped. Stand by. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your straight line. The nature of what they're doing now, it's quite repetitive. So it's testing their mental toughness, it's testing their mental resolve um, to be able to just keep going regardless of the fact that their bodies are screaming and hurting and you know, they've got oxygen deficit in their muscles and lactic acid build up, like the, their bodies will be hurting right now and you can tell the ones that are sort of letting it, letting it get to them and the ones that are just pushing through. So Sam, he's um, probably got a good level of base fitness uh, because uh, his mental toughness maybe might not be the same as what these lads are working too. Um, yeah, he's fine. Uh, Sam's finding it quite hard today. How do you think that went, Sam? Oh, it's pretty good. Pretty tired, but yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's pretty way different than what you think. Like you look from the outside and you think like, yeah, I can join the army, I can run far, but no, nah, it's way different to actually doing it and doing the the combat, I suppose, and the yeah, maybe the a little bit. After 16 weeks of basic training, the specialist training as an electronics technician begins. So tell me, what does an electronics technician involve? Uh, electronics technicians play an important part in the Army. Uh, we maintain and repair all the Army's electronic and optical systems. Oh, OK. So the soldiering side, what does that involve? Yeah, everyone in the Army is a soldier first. Uh, that's what the three months of basic training prepares us for. Everybody from a cook to an electronics technician can pick up a rifle and fight on the front line. Oh, OK. This is a New Zealand light armoured vehicle, and today you're going to be working on it. Oh, wow. But first up, let's get a real feel for it. We're going to take it for a drive. <laughs> Sweet. The light armoured vehicle is a $3 million war machine that, like other military equipment, uses state-of-the-art weaponry military-grade communication devices, and classified optic systems. Andy is trained to keep them all battle-ready. We get to work on multi-million dollar vehicle, uh, state-of-the-art equipment. The military is quite on the front line of uh, developing technology, and you'll see a world of equipment that uh, you'll never see as a civilian. Wow. Tell me, whereabouts um, is this job taking you? That was awesome. It was pretty, pretty technical in there. A lot of, um, a lot of electronics, a lot of different buttons and, and bits and pieces. Like the radio is pretty technical even. So that was great. But I can, you can see why it's a huge technical side to it. So it was great. Now it's time for Sam's first job of the day. This light armored vehicle has a fold in the turret and it's not powering up. We're going to grab a multimeter and start working our way through the cable. Uh, obviously, we should have a voltage at the batteries. Yep. We're going to follow that voltage along the cable and hopefully we'll pick up where the fault is. You can see the black box there that's got our batteries in it. Yep. If you want to go ahead and open that up, just flick those yellow levers up and take off the white shield. This terminal on the left and the other probe on the next terminal on the left. Wow. It needs to be 24 volts or above. Oh, OK. So that's not our problem. So we'll look at our diagram and move on. The next thing along is to check our main circuit break here. All right. Just push that all the way in with your thumb. And make sure it's secure. It's good. OK, that should be all right. Check our main circuit break here. We're going to follow this cable along and into the slip ring. All Grab right. your meter again. Pull that cable there off. Yep, that's 24 volts. So our fault's not there. We need to carry on. Find the connection J4 and measure the voltage. Does that feel alright? No, it's quite loose. That's quite a common problem, so we'll do that up securely yep. and check for our fault again. Go ahead and jump in the gunner's seat. How does that look? 
full power is working. Excellent. Looks like we've found our fault. Awesome. In here, it's all, all the wires are so bunched up and so nested together, but on here it's so simple. Yep, and that's why we have a circuit diagram. Uh, it clearly lays out all the systems in the vehicle, where everything goes sure. and how the wires are connected. Now armed with knowledge of electronic circuits, Sam helps repair a laser warning system. A laser warning system is a pretty important part of the vehicle. It uh, lets us know if uh, someone's firing a laser target designator at us, like they're about to launch a missile. Firing now. No, last one doesn't work. For you, what's it like to be part of the New Zealand Army? There's a sense of satisfaction belonging to the Defence Force, helping people in situations like Christchurch earthquake, uh, to defending New Zealand and supporting peacekeeping operations overseas. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's a good feeling. A test confirms the fix. Yep, they all seem to be working, Andy. Looks like we'll fix the problem, and our job here is done. But the day isn't done yet. A call comes in about a problem with a light armoured vehicle on exercise in the field. Yeah, I understand on. you had a few problems with your wagon. Yeah, gun I was traversing before, and then a turret just stopped on us. Uh, no idea what was going on there. All right. Um, commander's uh, hand controller still works. Yep. Andy needs to get this vehicle operational as soon as possible because it's providing transport and support for troops engaged in a riot suppression exercise. Uh, the most likely cause is probably going to be this joystick. Military vehicles are designed with replaceable parts so that in heated situations like this... Maybe you're working. No, it looks like it's still a problem. Technicians can fix faults under fire. We've replaced our control box. Uh, the turret's working fine now. Okay. So it looks like that was our problem after all. Now the LAV can offer essential support for the riot suppression. How did you find being an electronics technician in the Army? I found that um, being in the Army is not only just about being an electronics technician, but a lot of physical um, parts to it and aspects to it. But an Army way of life would uh, be a great way of life. So. Uh, excellent. Hey, great work, Sam. Hey, thanks Thank very much. You. Thanks. To become an electronics technician in the Army, you must be 17 years or older, medically fit for service, of good character, and be a New Zealand citizen. You must have completed Year 12 at secondary school with a proven ability in maths, English, and physics. Upon successful enlistment into the Army, you'll be posted to Waiuru Army Base, where you will do a 16-week basic military training course. The Army pay for all training towards your national diploma in engineering.